Hello and welcome to our channel. We're Mike and Heather and we have been traveling to all 50 states and we visited 49 of them in our Ford Transit Connect. We've been doing a series where we talk about the different things that we've brought and how valuable they were to take up space in our tiny little van. And one of the things that we brought, and we maybe brought too many of them at times, but they always seem to hold their weight and value, were board games. Heather and I both really enjoy playing different types of board games and it was a great way to pass the time when we were at campsites or stuck inside the van. So we wanted to share with you the different games we brought, how often we played them, and the ones that were just okay and the ones that are staples in our van that we never travel without. These all don't take up a lot of space and they're really great to travel with because they do pack down. And some are even waterproof, which is definitely a must. <laughs> we'll start with one that I'm sure pretty much everyone will know, which is Uno. So we did have Uno with us for a while, but because this one is kind of more popular, we took this one out of our van rather quickly. Not because we don't like Uno, but we were just wanting something more exciting. We did move to Dose for a while, but this one's honestly kind of weird, tricky. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't as easy to just pick up and go as yeah. Uno was. And Uno was something that we've played a lot. It kind so, of moved too fast. Like you, yeah. you got, cause it was only a two player one. Mm -hmm. You move quicker in Uno and it really didn't, the like, games didn't last that long and yeah. kind of got boring. Yeah, it wasn't as enjoyable to play with two people as it was with a larger group. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, these two games sort of moved out of our usual rotation. For Heather's birthday, she is a really, probably a much bigger board game fan than I am. So I went on the internet for a hunt to find exciting games that were a little bit different that we could bring and play on the road that were two player and compact. So I found two, one of them we played a lot more than the other, and that one was Trash Pandas. It's a combination dice and card game with a competitive edge. So it was fun when we played it, but it probably wasn't as just something Pick we- Pick up and go. Yeah, it's not something we would reach for when we just wanted to play a game. So while this was a lot of fun, it wasn't something that we always played and didn't stay a staple item in our van. Yeah but highly recommend that game. It is a lot of fun, it's very cute, and like Mike said, it does get really competitive. So it is a really great game. We just found some more that we liked even better than that. Yes, the other one, and this was one that was really recommended online a lot as a two-player game, was this game, Sushi Go. So this game was really kind of interesting. It was a card passing game, and you tried to create different sushi dishes. It was really different than anything we had played before, so it was fun to try and definitely something to look into if you like these types of games. Again, it was really highly recommended and we did have a lot of fun with it. It just wasn't something that we reached for as often as some of the other ones we'll talk about. Another entertainment game, I wouldn't necessarily call it a game, but Mike and I make it a game because we can make anything a game, is Flags of the World. So essentially, these are just a bunch of flashcards with flags of the world and some fun facts and letting you know the countries on the back. Because we want to be on The Amazing Race, this is something that we have way too much fun with. But <laughs> this especially is really great because on the back it gives you all sorts of information. It tells you the continent, the capital of the country, population, and currency. This is something that's not necessarily going to be in everyone's van, but we have so much fun memorizing these and quizzing each other, and it just is a really good time. And this set specifically is excellent. On a more serious note, we do want to learn the flags of the world because it is also our dream to be able to internationally travel. We feel like we're doing our part to learn a little bit more about the countries before we go, or at the very least learn about their flag, their money, their language, and some fun facts about it. Segwaying into more nerd stuff. Yes. On one of our visits to Disney World in the Star Wars part of the park, we came across a Star Wars poker card game called Sabacc. It's actually more fun than you would expect once you kind of learn what the cards are and the rules. There's some some neat quirks to it. There's a dice element that can ruin your entire hand. So it's fun and exciting and definitely satisfies like my Star Wars nerd fandom mm -hmm. by being able to play it. You don't need to know anything about Star Wars to play the game or win the game. But yeah, you just have to get your hand closest to zero. So it is really fun. Yeah, it is a, a fun poker type card game. The next five games are ones that we definitely play a lot. <laughs> yes. So while the other games we've shown you have been in the van at one point or another, these ones are always there. We'll start with the classic because it's not really a game, but it's just a deck of cards. But these are nice because they're waterproof cards. So when you are camping or if the picnic table is a little bit wet still or a little bit grimy, you can still play these cards and not really have any issues. So it's just nice to have like a good 
deck of cards. Heather and I really enjoy playing Speed or Spit. I, I You can use them in our team. Yeah, right? I'm not sure. I, everyone has different names and different rules for their card games. <laughs> These get a lot of use because they're just quick and easy to pull out, and the games are usually pretty quick. So this has been a great addition to our rotation. Next, Bananagrams. <laughs> <laughs> we hopped on the Bananagrams chain, train when we were obsessed with Wordle for a hot minute. And Words with Friends was another big one. Yeah, so we had always liked the app games like Words with Friends and Wordle. And when we were introduced to Bananagrams, we knew we had to get it. But yeah. essentially it's it's Scrabble. It's like free-flowing Scrabble. So yeah. you even have like the Scrabble pieces and it's a race. So you each get a certain amount and whoever gets out of their tiles the fastest mm -hmm. wins. So it's a lot of fun and it's really, really fast paced, whereas like Scrabble kind of drags. This is, you want to like make the amount of yeah. words as fast as possible. So it's a lot of fun. This one I got, I, I started off pretty well on this one and then Heather beat me soundly a bunch of times in a row. <laughs> so this one has been a lot of fun for us to play. We play it at home, on the road. This one, I will say you need a flat surface to play mm -hmm. on. And, and a, a kind of a larger surface. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of space. So it's not always something that you can reach for because there are some requirements with it. Mm -hmm. But when we get an opportunity, it's one of our favorite things to play. Mm -hmm. The trick is to keep changing your words, which Mike wasn't doing for a while because you can keep changing it to make sure that you're using But you don't want to change too much because then you have too many letters without words to form. So You just want to get it done fast so you're not stuck with the Q's and Z's at the end. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's some strategy. The next one... This is another one that we didn't know about, and when I was looking for two-player games, this was one that I came across, and maybe unlike Sushi Go and Trash Pandas, this has been a huge hit with yeah. us. So this, this one we're pretty even on, yeah. only because I told you what I'd do to win, and then Mike steals my strategy. And then but, do them better. Yeah, <laughs> but now I don't really win on this one because I showed him what I do. Yeah. You use the beetle to like sit on the queen. So this game is called Hive. There is a little bit of a learning curve because you have to know what each piece does. It's kind of like dominoes mixed with chess. Yeah, but basically everybody gets a queen. So it's a two player game. So you get a queen and your goal is to protect your queen. So you don't want pieces to be built around it of the opposite color. And if you do, then you lose. Yeah. And that different pieces do different things. Like the beetle means that whatever piece you put it on, that piece can't move. The grasshopper can hop like I think three spaces. Yeah. So I will say that's the tricky part is learning what each piece does. But when you do it, after you do, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. We both know how to play chess, but we never really got into it that much. Mm -hmm. This is a really great sort of simple strategy games. The games go pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. and But in a good way. And it, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you can play a few of them to kind of create a series out of it. But it's another one that you kind of need space to to play on because you have to set your tiles and build from there. But so, it takes up a lot less space than Bananagrams. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's but a lot less pieces. This has been something that was a new game for us and we absolutely love it. Yeah, we, we kind of got obsessed with it for a while. This game is a recent addition to our sort of regular loadout. This was one that my family turned us on to and is a lot of fun. It's really great for playing in groups or just with two people. And this game is called Forget It. So it's a dice game that basically is you versus yourself while you're also competing to gain points against other people. So, it's kind of like a gambling game. Like, you, yeah. you need to know when to quit and just take the points that you have because if you go bust, then you get zero points that round. And that's my hardest thing is that I always want to like keep trying more and, and get the most points, but yeah. so instead he probably is the best strategy. <laughs> so basically the object of this game is to roll your, your nine dice that you get and to get as many points based on which side of the die it lands on as possible before you get the words forget it coming up on the die. It's fast paced. It's really easy to learn, I would say. Yeah, it's really easy to learn. It's fast paced. The games can take a little bit of time, but the rounds go quick. So everyone feels like they're engaged and you're not really sitting and waiting for the person next to you to finish. And it's really exciting too, watching how the other person is playing. So this was a really fun new game that we've also shared with other people as well. Mm -hmm. This one's good too, because you can't really get mad at your partner because it's really you who like self-sabotages by like not calling it early. So yeah, I mean, I guess you can get people on to say like, oh, you're not gonna roll again and try yeah. to get them to get forget it. But <laughs> it's really only you like trying to get as much points, so. If you wanna limit the fighting and just be mad at yourself, then this is probably the game. <laughs> 
And last but not least is Othello. So this is traditionally played on like a bigger board, but this is just the travel yeah travel um companion size i guess yep. it is magnetic the object of it if you haven't played it before is to get the most pieces in your color at the and, end of the game yeah and you do that by um sandwiching in your opponents and then you get to flip all of theirs so it's really demoralizing when it's happening to you but it feels really great when you're able to get those moves through the other people but another really easy one to learn i will say this is without a doubt the game that we have played the most mm -hmm. the games are fun they're strategy filled there's definitely elements to it that you need to learn to get good, mm -hmm. but that's really fun to develop your skills. We play this more than any of the other ones. We get more competitive with this game than any of our other ones, and it just is a lot of fun. And so this was one that we had played the full-size game mm -hmm. at home fairly regularly, so we were able to find a travel size to take on the road with us, and it has just absolutely been worth it. There's a video of me winning my first best of three, the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, and that was really exciting for me. So we've played this game a ton. Those five, for sure, are always in the van. And you can see how little space that they take up, so especially these three you can kind of cram them and wedge them into all these little places but we just kept them in like a tub next to our laundry soap and everything because again it doesn't take up that much space like this could be one board mm -hmm. game that you just have at your house and you have five so yeah definitely recommend it, at least these five games but all the ones that we talked about today we've had a blast playing so definitely yeah. should look into them last but not least this is something that isn't a board game but it is a gaming thing. So we bought a Nintendo Switch before we went on the road, and then it just made a lot of sense to bring it with us. We've played two-player cooperative games like Diablo 3. We've mm -hmm. played single players where we traded off like Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and other Zelda games. It's great because... But the classics like Mario Kart. Yeah, Mario Kart is fantastic. So this is really excellent because you can play two-player games on it together at the same time, or... You can play single player games. Heather is a big fan of Animal Crossing. I play Pokemon. So it's really great because it's super versatile. Definitely, if you're a gamer, the Switch is a really great console to bring on the road. This may not be in everyone's van. Other people might bring along more books or movies or things like that, but this was a favorite pastime for us when we had a little bit of free time. Thanks for watching this one. This one is a little bit more personal for us because <laughs> this is something that we love and are passionate about. So let us know if you play any of these and how your series against whoever you play is going. I'm losing in most of these, but they're still fun to play. If you also have any recommendations for good two-player games that are easy to compact down for travel, we'd love to hear them, so also leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. I'm living my best life. I wake up with the sunrise. It does not look a thing like I thought that. in my bed